Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to XPS Tech. I'm Vineet and in today's video, we'll check out Pop OS, a Linux distribution from System76. There has been quite a hype around this distribution since its announcement last year. Partly because System76 is a big computer hardware company, having its own desktop and laptop lineup and it has been in business since 2005, so it's quite established also. Prior to last year, System76 used Ubuntu as their default operating system on all their computer products. But when Ubuntu announced they are giving up on Unity, System76 decided to custom build their own Linux distribution for their computers. This led to the development of Pop OS, which had its first release in 2017. So Pop OS is a fairly modern Linux distribution and if you go by their website, it seems to be targeted towards software developers, system professionals, etc. But that we'll find out in a short while if there's any truth in this claim or it's just another Linux distribution with few cosmetic changes and a competitive marketing strategy. All right, so let's begin today's video. Starting off with the installation, the installation image can be obtained from Pop OS website, which is beautifully designed, showcasing some of the features of the operating system. But I feel they are pretty standard features and all major Linux distribution nowadays have many more features than just Windows snapping and do not disturb mode. But full marks to the marketing team, they have done a good job with all the literature and beautiful design. Now at the bottom of the page you have the download button which gives you two images to choose from, the regular Intel AMD image. And for NVIDIA graphic card user, there's another image which gives you proprietary NVIDIA drivers pre-installed with the operating system. This is interesting and there are very few distribution that provides installation image based on specific graphic card. But one thing to note here is that the NVIDIA image will not work on system with UFI secure boot enabled. So you have to disable it first before running the installation. The size of regular installation image is around 1.9 GB and there's no support for 32-bit system. It only supports 64-bit systems. The installation process is pretty standard and self-explanatory, but the installation interface has been redesigned since the last version of Pop OS. Earlier, it used to have the same Ubuntu installer for installing the OS, but now you get this fresh new installer. And this is one of the few Linux distribution that uh, do a sort of a two part installation of the OS. In the first part, you select the system language, keyboard layout, the drive where you want to install the operating system and that's all. Then the installation of the OS begins. Uh, after the installation is over and you reboot the system, you then get the welcome interface that lets you create user accounts, set password, log into your online accounts, etc. Alright, so this is the desktop that you get in Pop OS. It's GNOME 3.28.2 desktop. And GNOME is the only desktop available with Pop OS, which I feel is a limitation of this OS. Now, the desktop has been slightly tweaked uh, to customize it for Pop OS. Visually, you have few noticeable changes. It has its own set of icons. There's this uh, grayish or brownish with orange color theme uh, that is present throughout the desktop. And it also uses a different system font. All this makes it different from the default GNOME desktop. This change in the window styling also, which has this material style design. All right, now I'm not going to go over all the features demonstrated on Pop OS website because I think they are very basic and standard feature that almost every Linux distribution has. But instead, let's go through the features of Pop OS that makes it different or special from any other Linux distribution with GNOME desktop. Our first is the new installer, which is brand new uh, and presents all the setup information in a clear and simple way. Second point that goes for Pop OS is the fact that it is based on Ubuntu. So you get the entire Ubuntu ecosystem, large number of softwares that are available on Ubuntu repository. You can also use on Pop OS. You have the same app package management tool that can be used to install new apps. And also the OS gets frequent updates. Third, Pop OS has excellent hardware support. And you kind of expect that as it is built by a company that primarily manufactures computer. And that is the reason why you get a separate installation image preloaded with proprietary NVIDIA graphic drivers. Fourth is the Pop Shop, which is a graphical app to install or uninstall applications and to update the operating system. The app interface is designed by the elementary OS team 
which you can make out by looking at the colors and design of the images. Last but the most important feature is the performance. Pop OS has been performing tremendously well in my test machine with Core i5 processor and 4GB RAM. The desktop is buttery smooth with no lag even on opening multiple apps on four different workspaces, which is really great and I think this is the strength of Pop OS compared to other Linux distribution. All right, now let's talk about some of the issues with Pop OS. First is the Pop OS GNOME Shell theme. There's no minimize or maximize buttons at the top of the window pane, which is a very basic feature that every computer user is so used to. And I don't understand the reason for not including this. Uh, now, technically, you can bring back the buttons by downloading the GNOME tweak tool from terminal because it's not available in the pop shop. But there should be some way to do this in the setting app or using any default application instead of going through the terminal and installing a new app. Second, there's no choice for desktop environment. Uh, there's just one GNOME desktop, which is a serious limitation for a modern Linux distribution. Third, uh, the media codecs are not pre-installed by default. Uh, so when you try to play a movie or a video, you get this prompt letting you know that the codec is not installed. I think they should have included it in the default installation. All right, so that was all. My final thoughts on Pop OS. If you love GNOME desktop, and a fan of the Pop OS theme and wants a modern Linux distribution based on Ubuntu, you can try Pop OS. It's not heavily bloated with custom maps and hence shines on performance aspect. The desktop is lighter, but you still require a fairly modern computer as there's no support for 64-bit system. But there's nothing here that other Linux distribution cannot do. So you won't miss on anything if you skip this. All right, so that was all for today. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you like this video, kindly press the like button. If you have any comment, suggestion or feedback, do type that in, in the comment box. Uh, a huge shout out to all the subscribers of XPS Tech channel. Thank you for supporting me. Uh, I thank you again for watching and I'll see you next time.